Last week, I made a tier list ranking every single legend in the game, but if you want an abridged version of just the 10 best, then you've come to the right place. Just a little bit of a disclaimer, I mean, these ranks, they're kind of arbitrary, right? The difference between a number 4, 5, 6, 7, you can probably argue any placement or any permutation of that orders, since the difference in legends is pretty small and it just comes down to what you value. But what is important is the range of where they are, right? Because the top half, probably they have more tools or they have uh, better options than some of the bottom half. But end of the day, again, it's pretty arbitrary. And uh, I mentioned this more in detail in the full tier list video, but these types of lists, they only really matter at top level play. Every single legend in the game, every single character is viable. You can top eight, you can rank one with every character in the game. Uh, that's just how Brahalla is designed. Let's get started here with number 10, who I think is Nash. Now, Nash is number 10 on my list, but you gotta remember that there are over 50 legends in this game. So he's one of the big boys right off the bat. And Nash, he almost has the perfect setup for today's meta. He's got an amazing set of stats. He can go down to two decks and dex is probably the least valuable stat in today's meta. So obviously uh, having a low value in that means that you get to allocate it into other areas and the areas that he gets to allocate it into, uh, he has high speed and he has above average defense, which are the two most valuable stats. So he's got a great set, set of stats. He's got hammer which is uh, at top level play one of the best three weapons in the game right now so he's got that locked and loaded he's got an insane signature okay let's just take a look at this remember this is a three decks character that you can put down to two decks and he has signatures that are this fast like you cannot punish this signature if the if like the nash is uh spacing it well it's so difficult and it has an incredible amount of force because of nash's archetype this one has an insanely huge hitbox if we take a look at this it's actually just a wall like, you, you see that, right? That is crazy. And then this has a lot of utility. You can use it to get back on stage. You can catch people in the air. If you use it here, it has a different type of hitbox. Use it here, it still slams on the ground. Not the best signature in this kit, certainly, but uh, definitely usable. Definitely a lot of utility. I just had two giant burps that I cut out, so you're welcome. <laughs> His spear kit is also crazy. If we're talking about hitboxes, just look at this. Just look at this. And this hitbox was, like, tweaked recently. So yeah, it's kind of insane. It hits grounded, it hits in the air. If you do a side light into N-Sig, it covers a ton of dodges. Uh, then the side sig is super quick. Also, you notice it kind of caught there, even though it maybe looked like it wouldn't have because it has this upward hitbox as well. I mean, look at that. Yeah. It's, it has a, a semi-spike hitbox, you can GC it to get a lot of distance on the stage, so the amount of, like, let's say so you're trying to edge guard a Nash, you have to back up to right here in case he does that. So you gotta be worried about that. And then his down sig is a little bit of a stinker of the bunch on the spear, but in the most recent patch it was changed to be more useful, so it is better now, and also its hitbox is kind of absurd. Nash is kind of the king of absurd hitboxes as you're noticing, like, look at that! Look at that! So yeah, Nash, number 10 on my list. The only thing that isn't super incredible meta right now is his spear, and, and spear by no means is bad, it's just not at the tippy tippy top of weapons, which is why he's not like number one, for example. But ever since spear got the sidelight change, if you're not aware, spear sidelight always, no matter what damage you're at, sets up in the exact same spot. So if you catch a dodge, that full thing, that full combo, that full string is guaranteed. If, the, if your opponent has no dodge, they cannot escape that. And that is really, really crazy. So Nash, he's one of the best 2v2 characters in the game, but in just in 1v1, uh, he's also a huge threat. And he's number 10 on the list. All right, moving on to number nine. Sorry to interrupt, I just, uh, I always forget to say this, so if you, if, if you enjoy the videos, consider checking if you're subbed, no big deal. If not, uh, you know, it, it's free and it helps out a lot. So yeah, thanks, sorry again. Number 9 is Petra, she's my main, I love Petra, and I mentioned that Hammer is one of the best three weapons in the game right now. Another one of those three is Gauntlets, and Petra has the best Gauntlets in the game. Let's talk about her Gauntlets. Ensig, absolutely insane. This move is like Sidelight, if Sidelight was beefed up to a million. It hits Grounded, you can cover a bunch of dodges, it has a lot of reach. If you do a Sidelight into Ensig, for example, you cover like four different dodges at once. If you do a Reverse Ensig, you cover all, uh, alternate options. It's just crazy good, it's very fast, it has low recovery time, uh, or relatively low recovery time for what it is. I don't think we need to talk about that one anymore. Side Sig, also incredibly low recovery time for what it is. It's got recovery time nerfs in the past, like a few patches, but it's still pretty good. Uh, you can active input it up, a lot of people don't know that. It's not the most useful active input, but if you land it like that, for example, me doing it forward wouldn't have killed. It's just quick, it has a, like a relatively small hitbox, you notice, but that is not that big of a deal because she moves with it. You'll, like, I don't think you'll 
notice very often that this hitbox uh, holds you back because it's a moving hitbox. Uh, so yeah, she's just super good. Again, gauntlets are super meta right now, so kind of just makes sense that she's up here. And also, orb is nothing to scoff at. In my opinion, orb is one of the best weapons in the game. Probably maybe five or top five or top six, something like that. Um, yeah, it's just super good. Always been solid ever since it's a uh, it's patch or, or it's uh, what's what's the word like week one patch. So a lot of people actually fun fact a little bit of a, an off topic side note, but a lot of people are always like, oh man, every weapon that Brahala releases is just broken. But that's actually not true. Orb was not that good on release, but then it got a, a week one patch or maybe a week two patch. I can't remember. It basically made its momentum uh, feel a lot smoother. Some recovery updates and uh, and now it's the beast that it is. Orb is very solid. I think if there's a patch where great sword and hammer and gauntlets and everything get nerfed. Orb is probably up there among the top two weapons. So yeah, Petra, very, very scary. Her orb isn't like something special. It's not amazing. It's just a decent orb, but orb doesn't really need signatures to be that good. It's just kind of, if you have great signatures, it's even better. But yeah, orb is just super solid. She also has an amazing stat line for her uh, weapon set. Having high strength on gauntlets and orb is crazy good. And then she also has low dex and, you know, high speed. So that's pretty good. Petra, very good character. Can never really go wrong picking her. I guess if you miss that recovery, you can go wrong, but bye, Rayman. Now, Teros should not be a surprise that he's also up here. If you copy and paste a lot of what I said about Nash, then it's true for Teros. He's got high strength. He's got low dex. He's got great stats. He's got hammer, which again is very, very meta right now. And also, I know I'm playing as Roman Reigns, but that's, uh, he's got great sigs, and, uh, he no longer has this as a true combo, which, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but that used to be a true combo. Absolutely absurd. Kind of insane. But this still is. He still has sig true combos. This side sig got buffed this most recent patch, so this sig, I think, is actually kind of crazy now. It starts up faster, and it still has that incredible amount of force and incredible hitbox. This thing, uh, if you're jumping, it's still gonna hit you. Like, oh, you're in the air, JK. No, you're not. So, yeah. Axe, since the most recent nerf, is no longer one of the the beasts that it was, but uh, the nerf isn't that big. It's just that the me weapons that are super meta right now tend to be pretty good against Axe. I think with the exception of Hammer, Axe tends to have a pretty good matchup into Hammer, but Axe is still very good, and Teros is one of those characters where if he hits you just a few times, you die and that's always scary to fight. He also still has this N-Sig with a, an absurd amount of, uh, of stun on it. You can true combo this move in light HPs. I will just demonstrate very quickly on this Rayman. You can do this. You can also do a side light if you hit it correctly. So it, it's, just, it's just insane. And then obviously, I'm sure you've been hit by it GC'd off stage. It's kind of ridiculous. So Teros, not only does he have a lot of stuff that's super meta, he's got, like I said, the, the low dex, he's got the weapon set. He's also got some cheese on him. He's got some cheese. I mean, this move is a reversal and sometimes, okay, Rayman is teleporting out of there. Sometimes you can just die by it. And then again, that other NSIG is kind of ridiculous. So Teros, number, uh, number eight on my list. Next up is Wuxiang, who is a very different character from Teros. Wuxiang is a high dex character. He's kind of uh, an anomaly. I mentioned that word a lot in the tier list because his stats are not meta right now. They're, they're just not. But Wuxiang is so good that even if his stats aren't meta, it's okay because gauntlets are meta and he has a great pair of gauntlets. Uh, and then he also has the best spear in the game. Wuxiang's spear is absurdly good. I say that as I miss, but the amount of coverage that you have with this move and with this move it's like you have nowhere to go because when you're playing against spear and you're in kill percent you can avoid the air right because the air you run risk of getting hit by this you run risk of getting hit by this you run risk of getting hit by this or, or of this but on the ground what do they have they have end light they have side light they can't really uh, kill you with those moves uh, maybe they can set up into a kill but they're not not the immediate risks but against wuxiang he has a light attack that kills in that side sig this is, this is a light attack. I mean, it's faster than a lot of light attacks in the game. You keep someone in the corner, they're not gonna punish you for this. You're just keeping them away. Oh, looks like they fell into one of, uh, another one of your grounded light attacks and they're dead. This move, not as good as the others, but if you do land it, it, uh, it has an absurd amount of force. And so you're like, okay, well, let's say I, I don't wanna get hit by this downlight and I'm gonna just space right outside that downlight range and outside of the side sig range. Oh, JK, he's got this. And this move also has an absurd amount of force for, uh, for Wuxiang's archetype. Coverage, speed, it's great. 
Wushong, best spear in the game. That's why he's up here. Spear, like I mentioned, is solid. It's not the best weapon in the game, but it's solid, and Wushong's spear is the solidest of them all. Again, I don't think I need to talk about Gauntlets too much because they are, uh, like I mentioned with Petra, one of the best weapons in the game. Why is that? They have a great combo potential in that three-piece true combo. They have a lot of coverage and control. They have knockout power with recovery. They have one of the best offstage games. They can really lock you into stun and, and vortexes with nair stun. It, it's just super good. Gauntlets are, are, are uh, pretty good right now, and they also have a pretty good matchup spread against other things that are meta. So, yep. Next up is Koji, and <laughs> I forgot I had this mod still installed from that <laughs> from that Scythe video, so this is gonna be a bit of a of Rayman murder, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, so Koji, like I like I talked about with Wushong, he's a little bit different. He has high dex. He's like his stats aren't really meta right now, but he's still just as good because uh, his bow is the best bow in the game, and bow is one of those weapons. I mentioned it with Orb. I think if the top three get nerfed bow will take their spot because bow is actually super clean right now it, it's super good it just isn't having uh, the amount of shine i suppose because of an unnamed weapon <laughs> that we'll get to that is kind of taking the spotlight away but koji in my opinion has the best bow in the game cover a bunch of dodges like this cover a bunch of dodges like this koji flows amazingly and sword his sword is also one of the best in the game i don't think it's the best sword but it's certainly very solid his sigs again I think Koji is one of the characters that's the best designed, his sigs flow perfectly with his kit. He's also the character, or one of the characters that, no matter what the meta, he's kind of always been near the top of tier list, which is crazy if you think about it. Even when sword and bow aren't the most meta weapons, Koji is still up there because of how good he is, and I think that should be a testament to his strength, because neither sword nor bow are the weapons that I've been mentioning that are the best, and yet he's still up here on this list. Uh, he's just so- and his, his stats aren't meta. That's how good Koji is. He has like three out of four things that aren't meta, but he's Koji, so it doesn't matter. He also has that uh, that string. He's just great. Yeah, every single one of his signatures is usable and is good. So yeah, if you're a sword player, if you're a bow player, Koji is definitely a, a character to take a look at if you haven't already. Although I'm sure you have already because it's Koji. Like I mentioned, he's always been up here. Thor, another hammer character, should be no surprise at this point. He's one of those characters that has dominated the scene for a long period of time. For most of 2019, Thor was on top. He won almost every single 2v2 major tournament. He got second place in the BCX 1v1 of that year. Thor is just insanely good, he has a great stat spread, he has great signatures, and he's got a great weapon combo. I think orb and hammer complement each other perfectly. It's pretty much like having an alternate version of sword and hammer, which uh, I'm sure you can get that I'm hinting at that for the future, but yeah. He only has one sig that's kind of a little bit of a stinker, which is this one, but otherwise he has this true combo. He has uh, this move, which by the way, I don't know if you know this, a lot of people uh, don't know this, but we'll see if I can hit this. This has a hitbox on the way back, like this. Yeah, it still hits on the way back. We'll see if I can time it here like this. No. Yeah. He, he's just kind of crazy. This side sig has been nerfed a few times and it's still insanely good. So I think that should also be a testament to how good Thor is. That even though he gets nerfed a bunch, he's still very strong. He's still at the tops of these lists. Part of what makes Thor super solid is his matchup spread. Because Hammer can sometimes struggle against a few weapons, although right now it's super strong, so that might not be the case, but uh, re regardless, Hammer sometimes, if weapons out-prioritize it at certain angles, can struggle. But Orb kind of has perfect coverage. There's no matchup that Orb really feels like uh, it just doesn't do well at all against. You kind of have tools to... To help yourself in every matchup, you know, maybe you won't use every move all the time, but it has zoning tools, it has close range tools, uh, it has aerial tools, it has edge guard tools, it has wall bounce capabilities, it has ground bounce capabilities, it has corner locking capabilities with stuff like this. So orb is just always solid, maybe it's not the best weapon in the game, but you can never really go wrong with it. And then to be supplemented with a weapon like hammer that's as explosive as it is right now, it's just a perfect combo. Bodvar, oh I saw the Rayman hammer. <laughs> Bodvar, everything that I said about Orb is also true for Sword. It kind of always has the tools, I mean I guess minus the wall bounce capabilities, but Sword kind of always has the tools to win in a certain matchup. Uh, it's jack of all trades, but also master of some trades, so yeah, you can't really go wrong with Sword ever, and Bodvar is kind of the classic character. Also fantastic stat spread, also amazing signatures, I mentioned in the 10 underrated SIGs video, this one I just pressed my windows key. Uh, his sword is also kind of ridiculous, you have this as an unjumpable string. This move, if we're talking about hitboxes, I mean, 
look at that. Look at that coverage. It's actually kind of absurd. Uh, and for the amount of force it has, it's like, you're dead. It's not even like you run out of jumps and you can't get back. No, it just KOs you. And even if you don't get KO'd because of the amount of force, you get sent down so low that it opens up a free edge guard. Bodvar, he's got the tools, he's got the sigs, he's got the stats. He's pretty much the epitome of a character that is uh, that is good, right? He doesn't have any weaknesses, pretty much. Uh, I mean, maybe you can like say, like, oh, certain matchup spreads or something like that, but I'm talking about general character archetype. He doesn't have a single sig that stand out as bad. Uh, like this one is one that may, people may look at, but it's actually fairly good. It has a good amount of force. It's excellent in teams. Uh, you can also do stuff like this. So yeah, Bodvar, he's kind of the classic Brawlhalla character. He's the character that most people say, oh, if you're playing for the first time, why not try Bodvar? Which makes sense. He's the flagship character. He's the icon of the game. Uh, the most, I guess, recognizable Brawlhalla character, I would say. So yeah, Bodvar. What is he? Number four on my list? I'm pretty sure he's number four. Yeah, he's definitely number four, because top three, let's talk about core. I've been saying this whole time that uh, <laughs> Gauntlets and Hammer are two of the best three weapons in the game, so I guess it only makes sense that core is up here, but just because he has those weapons, it, I don't think it's enough to put him at number three, and that's why we talk about his stats and his sigs. These sigs are actually insane. Like, that, this one, you'll notice it has a property where even if you GC it, you keep falling. Normally moves freeze you, like this, or slide charge, I should say, not GC. Um, but this just keeps falling, and because it's a spike, it ends up KOing way earlier because of that, which is kind of crazy. Having this as a stacked KO option on gauntlets is great, even though I just missed it. This extension arm type of thing, very, very good. Pretty quick. I don't think you can react to the startup at all, uh, because the startup is not necessarily the same as the, as the animation, right? You click the button, and it does take a little bit to come out, but the amount of visual feedback back that you get when it actually comes out uh, is hard to tell. Again, Gauntlets and Hammer just have so much control right now. Uh, they can deal so much damage, a lot of knockout power, uh, a lot of space, spatial control. They're excellent in twos. Core also has this as a true combo. Kind of crazy. It has kind of a suction hitbox. If you hit it in a situation where Dare can hit, it'll always work. So yeah, sometimes you just want to do a downlight stare for the knockout like in there or if you're in the corner, but if you're just building up damage, downlight NSIG is a very solid way to do it. It's also solid to KO if you want to KO off the top earlier than a down air. It's just, yeah, core is just terrifying. Uh, it, I'm playing as Jake who also, you know, he can turn into a car. That's pretty cool. This move does 40 damage. That's pretty cool. And this side SIG has uh, kind of crazy knockout power. You'll notice it has a fairly good amount of range on it as well. It has an upward hitbox. You're noticing a trend is that these characters that are up here, they kind of sometimes have crazy hitboxes or like an absurd option like downlight into NSYNC true combo. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a very good move to keep people in the corner. KOs like that, you'll notice how far away am I? Like, I don't even know what to say. Jake is just, he's just a bean ball. Now number two, I don't think this should come as any surprise. It's Mako. What is the best weapon in the game right now? It's Greatsword. We all know this. You know this. I know this. Everyone knows this. It's just kind of crazy. And Mako, I think, is the second best Greatsword character. I'll talk about JN when we get to JN, but yeah. Let's talk about Mako's strength. So first off, she has base high speed, which is kind of terrifying, because you can just zoom across the map going like this and saying, goodbye, and then you're not going to make it back. Oh, no, you are going to make it back, because her side sig is the longest traveling signature in the entire game. And sig, even though it doesn't, uh, it's a spike move, so it won't kill from the center of the map like all the time, and you won't be able to do something like this and just hit someone immediately, uh, having this option, you can GC it off stage, and if someone's trying to edge guard you, you catch them, you send them downward. Uh, even if you're not just in the corner because generally spikes you can only really use them in the corner but with mako that's not the case because of the angle that it gives you like it's kind of crazy so that move is very good and then down sig on her greatsword is, is another beast entirely if we're talking about moves that you can just use outside of a string this is that move yeah you can use it to slide charge get a get a hovering hitbox here if someone's trying to recover back to the wall cover the entire wall and they just can't recovery it's kind of absurd. It's kind of insane. This signature has an insane amount of reach, a low amount of recovery time for how much coverage it has. It's just crazy. And then again, Greatsword. I mean, we can talk about Greatsword. You dash cancel and you're fine. Uh, you can get guaranteed 50-50s if they dodge with end lights out of side lights. 
a three piece combo after that uh yeah it's just crazy the one thing that i will say about greatsword that people complain about a lot but actually isn't really an issue is that after you miss you can continue doing finishers uh, i think that that can be harder to deal with uh if you if your movement isn't as precise or if you're not as familiar fighting the weapon but i think the true strength in greatsword does not come from its bridges or its finishers it comes from its starters dash canceling its starters escaping a recovery time just getting out of there that's what's really strong about it uh not the ability to do this because that is actually pretty punishable and if you do avoid that um then you know the greatsword user is in some trouble it is good to get some mix-ups let's say you always dash cancel and you whiff and you go into stuff like this and you always escape instead if you hold your ground and then do a move that can be harder uh, to deal with if they mix it up but generally speaking whiffing on greatsword and then going into a bridge is uh is not what makes it super strong but anyway that's a that's a little side note there we all know greatsword is kind of a monster at the moment so let's move on to the king of greatsword himself in my opinion, and among pretty much every top player in, in, in the game's opinion, Jayun. Now Jayun, among all the other you know great sword strengths I've been mentioning, he also has the Jayun signature kit. If we're talking, I, I didn't even mention Mako's guitars, by the way. I I just I don't know. That's what happens when you play great sword. <laughs> it's just that's just the only thing you can think about. Mako's guitar sigs are also insanely good, down sick especially. But let's talk about Jayun. So Jayun, he has this move. He also has this move. And these are two of the best signatures in the entire game, and he has them both on one weapon. And that one weapon is the best weapon in the game. <laughs> so it's like, okay, if we don't even talk about his great sword, we talk about his sword, he has the best sword in the game as well. If he only had side sig, he'd still probably be the best sword in the game. But he also has end sig, which is super, super good. You can use it to recovery. Uh, and he also has down sig, which has an absurd amount of force. Like, uh, well, let's just take a look at this. Peace. Yeah. So... Jayun, he has the best sword in the game, he has the best great sword in the game, great sword is the best weapon in the game, sword is up there, so yeah, he's just crazy good. It's no surprise. We all we all knew this was coming. Jayun is absolutely absurd. He's a lot of fun, you know. We all like to, to meme on great sword, but it's a lot of fun to use. Um, I myself am working on a, a great sword montage, so I'm part of the problem, I guess. But yeah, there we go. Those are the 10 best legends in the game at the current moment in time, December 2020. Hope you enjoyed let me know uh how wrong i was i'm gonna go edit this video and then take a walk outside because it's raining for the first time in like months so that's kind of cool and uh i'll see you later goodbye